My name is Melissa Rodriguez, and I am the owner of Melrose Formal, formerly known as Quince by Melissa. I opened my business in September of 2009. This was after I won the business plan competition here at Wichita State in spring of 2009. I was the first Latina to win. I was the first female to win. My parents have owned their business, Rodriguez Fashions, for almost 30 years now. So business is in my blood. So when I decided to um, get my degree in entrepreneurship, I knew that's what I wanted to do because I don't know anything different than business, basically. So in order to graduate, one of our last classes for the semester was to write a business plan competition. And our professor, he said, if you want to write something, write something you have a passion about because you have to write about it for a whole semester. So I decided to write about having a store that sold quinceañera dresses, which is a coming of age, very popular in the Hispanic community. At the end of the semester, we had to get judged. He brought in guest judges. They literally made me cry. They asked so many questions. I finished my presentation, answered the questions, and just left. And I just cried in my car because I was like, this is just for a grade. I'm not really asking for money. Just give me a grade and that's it. And that was that. I graduated in December. And then that spring, our professor sent us an email saying, hey, you guys should really consider entering the competition. And you guys kind of have an advantage because you guys already got judged. So you know what to tweak about your business plan. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, it's like they ripped me apart during class. Like, I don't even want to imagine when there's actually money on the line. It was just about dresses. Everybody else wrote about medical technologies and all kinds of more intricate things than dresses. My mom kept telling me, Mija, just do it. Do it. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And I was like, no, mom, I'm not going to do it. Quit bugging me about it. Finally, like 20 minutes till a deadline, I was like, OK, I'm going to listen to my mom. Sped to get here to drop off the paperwork. Forgot about it. I never checked my WCU email because I had already graduated. And I casually checked the email and it said, congratulations, you have been selected for the trade show. You're top 16. I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Couldn't believe it from the top 16, top eight. And then at the dinner, I was top four. And they mentioned second place, third place. And then um, they announced that they were so impressed with the business plans that they were just going to go ahead and award fourth place with $500. So I remember telling my mom, hey, like, at least I walk out with $500. And then they named first place Quince by Melissa. So yeah, I won. And with that money, I started my business. Luckily, my mom's building had a room for me. <laughs> so um, my mom had already established like relationships with different providers. So I was just, hey, I'm the daughter and this is what I want to sell. Like, can you guys point me in the right direction? And then we just branched off from that. I got my first shipments of quince dresses and I just wanted something that was different. Traditional, but not so cookie cutter. I just feel like me being closer to that age range at that point in time really helped me get an advantage over the competitors because a lot of the competitors were like older ladies. So I was really able to establish that connection with my younger customers. Like, well, what do you like? What don't you like about this? What would you like to see? A quinceañera, it dates back to the Aztec times. Before Mexico was colonized by Spain, um, at that age, the younger ladies from the tribes would be taken away and they would be taught how to become women, like cleaning, different kinds of medications, like housewife stuff. So when the Spaniards came to Mexico and they colonize are like, well, at this age, you can either become a housewife or you can go to the convent. So as years have gone by, it's now a coming of age, similar to like a bat mitzvah in Mexican culture. Once a young, your daughter gets married, the groom pays for everything. So a quinceañera is kind of like the parents splurging on their daughters. So it's equivalent to a wedding, like the bigness of things, but minus the groom. Uh, when we started, um, I only had Hispanic customers looking for quinceañera dresses, so we would have the parents or the grandma with the 14-year-old looking for dresses, and then it grew into 
high school age girls are looking for prom. For prom, a lot of my customers are Caucasian. I want to, like I said, it was like over 90%. I would like to think we don't have any competition, but there's a, a couple um, Hispanic stores like around the area. Like I'm the youngest owner of a quince store. So I like to think that's what differentiates me because I like to look out, see what's new, what's trending, what do the girls like, what's not selling. I like to ask questions with my customers to see what they like and what they don't like. And in terms of prom, again, I'm like one of the younger girls. So I like to think like, hey, like if I could go to prom again, what would I want to wear? And I like, we like to be on social media to see what, what's popular, what's trending. We like to go to uh, different markets. A month before COVID shut down, I had given birth to my baby. We had to stay in the hospital a couple extra days, but I was still ordering inventory from the hospital and ordering thousands of dollars of inventory. Two weeks later, shut down. So I had all this money tied up, literally hanging on racks, unopened boxes of inventory, just sitting there. You can't sell it because everything is shut down. Yes, we've had the busiest quince season to date, which is really good because a lot of parties were postponed because of COVID. So we've been really busy with uh, quinceañeras. We were really busy with prom. Me and my mom, we still share that building. So it's just a two-person team. When my mom opened her business, she did make all the dresses. But now we don't. We buy wholesale. I could get a quince dress within two to three months max into the store. And right now, post-COVID, it's taking me in between four to nine months to get into the store, like, with there's not being enough people working, like, cutting the fabric, sewing, packaging. Everything gets delayed, and then gas prices and shipping costs have gone through the roof. So it's just, like, a chain reaction. People really don't understand, like, hey, yeah, we're kind of over COVID, but production-wise, we're not really over COVID. Since I had a head start or like a advantage because I had seen my parents' business, I think we you tend to forget that you're in charge of everything. <laughs> like if you have an upset customer, you're in charge. If you have a problem with your credit card terminal, you're in charge. If you have problems with a manufacturer, you're the person that has to make it happen. Like there's nobody, like a manager that you can just pass it on like in the regular company world. I feel like... As a community, people are more strict towards small business owners. Any little mistake, unacceptable. It gets blown up on social media. It gets blown on on any kind of like platform. Like, oh, well, they didn't do this right. But how many times have you gone to Target or Walmart or all these other big box stores in which they have upset us or done something wrong and you just leave it at that and you continue to shop at that store? You don't write about it. You don't express to your friends, oh my gosh, I went to Walmart and this is what happened. That you're going to have to have a really strong backbone and a strong head. I don't think people understand how difficult it is to run a business. They just think it's like, oh, just buy some stuff, open up, call it a day. It requires a lot of sacrifice because we open on the weekends. We can never like go out of town for the weekend. We had to like plan it ahead because we had to let customers know that we were going to be closed. So that's what I think a lot of people don't understand that you sacrifice a lot of your time. <laughs>